40 years ago, I moved to Manchester to work for the campaign for homosexual equality, which was then the main gay rights organization in this country. I was very young. Then I had the good fortune to meet a guy called Alan Horsfall, who was a key campaigner for homosexual law reform in the 1950s and 1960s, at a time when male homosexuality was illegal and completely hidden. And Alan was always very clear that the liberation of homosexuals, to use the language of the time, could only be achieved by homosexuals themselves. A clear and simple message that it is true today as it was 50 years ago. So today, let's remember and celebrate Alan's courage, his life and his achievements. But also the achievements of hundreds of activists who follow in his footsteps. So let's hear it for the people who in 1988 organised the largest gay rights demonstration this country's ever seen against the hateful Section 28. Let's hear it for the activists who zapped Chief Constable James Anderton when he talked about gay men swirling in a cesspit of their own making. And let's hear it for the countless activists who quietly over decades have worked in their local churches, their trade unions, their workplaces to ensure that in 2017, in our country, most organisations have clear and public policies in support of LGBT equality. Over the last 50 years, we've moved from the very margins of society to the mainstream, which is exactly where we should be and where we intend to remain. However, today we face many new challenges. The battles for legal reform may well have been almost won, but the battles for minds and hearts must continue. We know, particularly in Manchester over the last year, that hatred, bigotry and ignorance are still very much out there. We know that people living with HIV still suffer real stigma, even within our own communities. I say to you tonight, as someone who's been living with the virus for many, many years, that it is not my identity. It is not who I am. It is simply a medical condition with which I am living and with which I am living well. We need to challenge bigotry wherever it appears, but we also need to be defending the things that we have gained. At the moment, our NHS and our public services are under attack. We must defend them. At the moment, many of our voluntary community organisations, which do such fantastic work, are facing cuts or some of their very existence is being threatened. We must support and defend them. Across the world, from Donald Trump's America to Chechnya to Uganda, we are witnessing a growing religious extremism fueled by a profound hatred of our communities. Global solidarity is essential if we are to ensure that 50 years from now, everybody, wherever they are living, has access to the equal rights that we fought for so hard and have won. Our history is important, but it can teach us and we must learn from it. And it tells us very clearly that everybody must be vigilant, we must be determined, we must all be activists in whatever way we can 
in whatever way that means for us. For if we do that, our community can say loudly and proudly, whatever the next 50 years may bring, that we are never, never going underground. Thank you.